What's up guys? Today we got the long-awaited Nike Alpha Fly 3 review. I know you guys have been waiting since I did that overview and unboxing for me to give my running thoughts on the shoe and I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I was planning to do a 5k pace workout in this week but it's been Christmas. My legs have just been absolutely slammed from these 110 mile weeks and this was a down week so I wasn't able to do that workout and Charlie told me you know just drop the video. So we got to just drop the review. I'll do another video after I get some 5k pace in here. Maybe I'll evaluate it against the Pro 3. Look it against the Vaporfly 3, the Takumi Sen. Let me know of those shoes, Takumi Sen, Vaporfly, and Saucony Northern Pro 3, which of these you want to see a running workout test in for 5k pace. Anyway, today we're going to dive deep into the Alpha Fly 3. I've got some great workouts in this shoe so far. Key ones are a 20 miler where I had some marathon race pace and half marathon race pace. Then I also did a straight 12 mile marathon pace tempo in this shoe, putting it through the paces and evaluating it as we would for a real life race. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my overall thoughts on the shoe, how it rides, whether it's comfortable, and whether it's a good fit for your rotation, especially given that $285 price point. All right, guys, before we get into it today, if you haven't checked out the Running Shoe Matcher tool yet, go to runningshoematcher.com. This is a really cool tool I built for you that matches you with the best shoe for you based on your goals and preferences. So you can go in there, answer five questions about what type of shoe you're looking for, whether you want a daily trainer, a tempo shoe, or a race day shoe like the Alpha Fly 3, whether you like your shoes soft or firm, and we'll match you with the best shoe for you. So it's live right now and it's free. You can check it out at runningshoematcher.com and I'll put a link in the description below. All right, let's get into it. So the Nike Alpha Fly 3 is one of two marathon racing shoes on Nike's roster. So they have the Alpha Fly here, which is the top dog. It's the king of the rotation. And then they also have the Vapor Fly, which is the more traditional marathon racing super shoe, which sparked this revolution of high stacked Piba soft and bouncy foams and carbon fiber plates. So the Vapor Fly was first and the Alpha Fly came second, building on that formula. And the key difference here is that it uses these Nike Zoom Air units up in the forefoot. So these are pressurized AirPods right up in this front landing zone that give a little bit extra zing and pop when you land on the forefoot so as you're running fast as you're running with force they bounce you off it's like a little bit of a mini trampoline effect that is designed to give you more energy return than a typical foam and plate setup so this is the third iteration of the shoe the first iteration was loved it was a cult classic it's like the nike jordan one that og shoe conor mcgregor was biking in it he was sparring in it almost a status symbol at this point the two came along and took the formula of the one and softened it just a touch made it a little bit more approachable for runners out there. It also gained some weight. It just didn't have that same magical feeling that a lot of runners loved in the one. So with that, Nike's attempting to make the three a faster shoe than the two, but a more comfortable shoe than the one and eliminate some of those fit and finish issues that runners had with the two. So before we dive into all the details, the headline here is that this is a very aggressive, fast, turbocharged feeling shoe. This is not a comfort oriented shoe at all. I know Nike's positioning it a little bit as such with some of that copy that they put on the inside of the shoe box here and with wanting to make this a more mass appeal shoe but it is not a shoe for mid-pack everyday runners i even feel a little bit too slow for this shoe with my 630 620 ish marathon pace now, the main reason that the shoe feels so aggressive has everything to do with the midsole setup. So as I noted in the intro, there's a three part formula to the midsole here. You have a full stack of Nike Zoom X. It's 40 millimeters in the heel and then 32 millimeters up in the forefoot. You have this carbon fiber plate, which you can see through the bottom here. And then instead of having Zoom X up underneath the plate in the forefoot, you have those zoomer units. So it's almost like you're running on top of technology. You can really feel these units out there on the ride. And that combines with the super aggressive rocker geometry that puts you up on your toe and encourages you to run fast no matter what pace you are attempting to run in the shoe. So one of the reasons this feels so much more aggressive than a shoe like the Vaporfly or the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 is because if you look at the way this is set up in the midsole, you're only getting about half the amount of foam in this as you have in a Vaporfly or as you have in a Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 and you can really feel that out on the run. So instead of running on top of the foam and then having that plate and then another layer of foam under there to sandwich that between the plate and the ground, what's in between the plate and the ground is these firmer pods. So this is going to feel a lot firmer underfoot than probably anything that you're used to running in, especially if you're coming from a more traditional super shoe. And combined with this rocker geometry here, it is not friendly at all for landing near the heel. Now, one of the key changes Nike did from the two to the three to try to make this a little bit more of a smoother, friendlier ride for all paces and all foot strikes is that they've connected the front and the back of the platform. So V1 and V2 had this bifurcated midsole area. You had a little bit of foam out here on the back and then there was an empty space in the middle and then you had the four 
four foot pods, they've now connected it. And I can feel out there on the ride as a heel striker that it rolls me through just like that Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 or Speed 3 will with those aggressive rockers. And that is a nice feeling. But once you get up on your toes, you don't wanna be spending much time there in the shoe. It really encourages you to push off as fast as possible and pop out into that next stride. So the ride here for me felt best at marathon pace or faster. And that's why I'm saying I feel even a little bit too slow for the shoe because it really wants me to run as aggressively as possible. So this is a shoe that feels best when running fast. So on that run in those places where I wasn't running at marathon race pace or faster, this was not the type of shoe that I wanted on my foot. So it is going to be a good training shoe for you if you have a lot of marathon pace long runs on the schedule and you want something super aggressive to be able to hit those paces. Now, one thing that is nice about the ride that I appreciate is they've widened the base out a little bit. So if we compare it even to this Vaporfly here, you can see that on the back landing area, the Alpha Fly is much wider. Same thing on the forefoot, the Alpha Fly is just gonna be a wider shoe. Now again, because of those AirPods though, it's not gonna be a comfortable ride. It's gonna be a much firmer ride, which I believe is only gonna be really appreciated by folks who are running sub 250 in the marathon. You can get away with using this as a marathon shoe for three hours or more, but I would not want to be wearing this for more than three hours, even out there on that two hour long run. I was running for about two and a half hours and not the most comfortable shoe to have on my foot for that long. Now, one area where I'm hoping Nike will innovate for the V4 is in the tuning of the AirPods. I'm wondering if there's something they can do with the air pressure here that makes it a little bit softer underfoot or just a more forgiving ride so that you are getting a little bit more impact absorption. Now, I know that's not the brief of the shoe. This is designed for all out marathon PRs and as a tool on our tool belt, as I refer to all running shoes, all running shoes are tools designed to do a job. This is a great shoe for assaulting your PR. It is a weapon, but not a comfortable one at that. So I'm wondering if they do want to make this a more mass appeal shoe, maybe tuning these pods a little bit differently or creating a trickle down version of this for three hour plus marathon runners that is more comfortable but still has those zoom air units for energy return so as with most shoes there's a trade-off between comfort and speed you're going to get some comfort from the zoom x foam and the forefoot but then the speed that energy return comes from firmness it comes from getting a little bit of pushback against your stride that's going to come from the plate and the zoom air unit so if you are wanting to pick up the shoe just beware that this is going to have a little bit of a firmer ride underfoot and unless you're running with force and speed up in the forefoot you're not going to be getting the most potential out of the shoe now where they have nailed it in terms of comfort is in the upper and the step in feel. This is an extremely comfortable shoe, which I was surprised about when putting it on my foot at first, since I heard so many complaints about the V2. Now I had no issues with rubbing, I had no issues with bleeding, I had no issues with the inner heel area that a lot of runners had with the V2. The toe box is actually a little bit wider in here than some of my other marathon racing shoes. And overall what they've done with this Adam knit fit here, which is a stretchy kind of mesh material that's hard, but, but structured is fantastic. So the upper is completely dialed in the lockdown was great I had no issues needing to tie or retie these shoes out there on the run and it feels like a really high quality shoe where you're gonna be getting every bit of that $285 in terms of the engineering that's gone into the shoe so that's an area where they've been able to shave off a lot of weight in the shoe is up here on the upper it's much more minimal than you're gonna see on a lot of other fast training and racing shoes I do think this will fit you if you have a slightly wider foot because the upper does have a little bit of stretch and if you're just going out there for two and a half three hours in the marathon it shouldn't be any issue this is not a shoe where you're going to want to lace it up multiple times per week three four or five times a week you put this on maybe once a week for your fast workouts if that and for races so i think you'll be okay with a slightly wider foot with the upper here all right guys, now for the outsole and durability. Before I show you what this outsole looks like, I do wanna note, this is not a durability oriented shoe. This is a racing shoe. It's designed for racing one to two marathons. And so evaluating this as an elite oriented racing shoe, I'm not gonna ding this a ton for not being a super durable shoe, but with that, you can take a look at the back here. You will see that there's some degradation of the foam with 30 odd miles on the shoe. You can see that the rubber is getting some scuffing as well. You can even see that the Nike logo is starting to rub off. And then up here on the side, the lateral area, we are getting some wear on this Zoomax foam. Up in the forefoot, it's a little bit better, not seeing too much wear and tear up here. So if you are a forefoot striker, you'll probably get a little bit more mileage out of the shoe than for heel strikers. With my race day shoes, I typically only use them two to three times before a peak race. I like to save that special feeling, that magic, that oomph for race day. So I only pull for a 
shoe like the Alpha 5 for one or two long runs before. And then of course, I gotta get in a good race pace workout in the shoe, probably two to three weeks before race day to make sure everything is locked, loaded, and ready to go. After that, you can start working your race day shoe post-race into your rotation as a long run shoe or as a workout shoe. And I have seen some people take their Alpha Flies to 500, 600 miles. That is definitely not me with how I wear on the heel area of shoes, but you can get some pretty decent mileage out of the shoe, especially if you are a four foot striker. It's not gonna have the same pop and zing after a few races, but it will be a good option for workouts after that. Now I am racing a marathon in April, so I likely won't put a ton more miles on this because I wanna save it potentially for race day. I have to decide between the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly, but after that race, I will beat the heck out of this shoe, take it to 200, 300 miles so that we can see how durable it really is. It's clear that the outsole rubber on the back is not going to hold up. This ZoomX foam is gonna degrade as it has in my Vaporfly at only about 50 miles, but it will be interesting to see if I can get 150 or 200 miles at least out of the shoe before the rubber in the back completely goes. Now the million dollar question, who is this shoe best for? Now Nike is positioning this as a shoe that works for elites as well as the everyday runner. I would push back on that a little bit. This is still a shoe designed for assaulting your marathon PR. It's a fast racing weapon and it's not gonna be the best option if you can't run with speed and form for the entirety of a half marathon or marathon. So with that, I do think this is a good option for you if you're trying to run a sub 140, sub 130 half marathon and you can run the entirety of that race with strength if you can run up on your forefoot and maintain good form throughout that entire effort this would be a really good shoe to score a half marathon pr now when we're talking about the marathon distance that's where it gets a little bit tricky because it's not the most comfortable shoe especially for the last hour 30 minutes you expect that you're going to be struggling a little bit in that race it can get the job done but it's not going to be the most enjoyable experience out there if you anticipate that there's going to be some jogging or walking or not running through the entire race with great form for that use case, the Vaporfly is definitely a better choice. That's a more comfortable shoe overall with that full bed of ZoomX foam and the changes that they made for the three, which give it a little bit more stack because they've reduced the amount of rubber. That's gonna be a much more comfortable experience for most runners out there than the Alpha Fly. But if you are gunning for that sub three marathon, if you're gunning for that sub 250 marathon, if you've already raced one or two or three marathons, you're in the best shape of your life, you want a killer weapon out there to help you go and shred some pace, that's what the Alpha Fly three is for. If you're willing to pay $285 to shave five to six minutes off of your PR, that's what the Alpha Fly 3 is for. This is going to be your partner in crime for any of those days where you really want to go out there and test your limits. So overall, this is an extremely fast shoe that does make running fast feel fun, it makes running fast feel aggressive. It is not a comfortable shoe. There's much more comfortable racing shoes out there, but if you want ultimate performance, that's what you're going to get in the Alpha Fly 3. So there you go, guys. Those are my thoughts on the Alpha Fly 3. Let me know what you want to know next about the shoe. Give me some example workouts you want to see me do in the shoe. Let me know what you want to see me compare it to for my rotation. I got the Vaporfly 2. I got the Vaporfly 3. I got the Saucony Norfolk Pro 3, the Adidas Takumi Sen. So let me know what you want to see. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another video.